On August the 2nd of 2020, Stephanie Angelica Vasquez was stopped by an unmarked cruiser from the Montgomery County Police Department after she was observed driving recklessly in Silver Spring, Maryland. She failed a field sobriety test and the police also found a pistol in her glove box. The 25-year-old was arrested on DUI and weapons charges and was due to appear in court on September the 11th. Vasquez would never make her court date. On September the 9th, she posted several videos of herself in a yellow 2020 Toyota Supra. One of them lauded the vehicle's engine power while in another, Vasquez filmed herself leaning out of the Supra and captioned the clip, I'ma kill it on the highway. Moments later, Vasquez sped along Muddy Branch Road in Gaithersburg. She then plowed into a Honda Accord, driven by 40-year-old Heriberto Santos Gonzalez and carrying two passengers. The impact was devastating and photos of its aftermath show the front of the Supra being completely mangled while the front of the Accord was sheared off. Vasquez and her passenger, 35-year-old Jonathan Chakras, died at the scene. Gonzalez and the other occupants of the Accord miraculously survived and were rushed to a local hospital with serious injuries. Number 6. Jaden Hayden In May of 2020, Jaden Hayden, aged 20, was a patient at the Westwood Nursing Center in Detroit, Michigan. The facility was on coronavirus lockdown at the time. On May the 15th, Hayden, a reported schizophrenia sufferer, set up his phone and recorded himself launching a vicious and relentless attack on his roommate, 75-year-old Norman Bledsoe. He punched the elderly man dozens of times as he fruitlessly scrambled to defend himself. Hayden was shown grabbing Bledsoe by the neck and pulling him off the bed. He then turned the camera to show the bleeding victim's face and said that he'd refuse to get off his bed. Hayden also stole the man's credit card and when staff asked what had happened, he told them that Bledsoe had fallen. The latter was taken to the hospital with injuries that weren't deemed life-threatening. Hayden posted the clip to his YouTube channel, the content of which also showed the young man claiming black people were the chosen people, that female celebrities were really men, and that the coronavirus was God's punishment for gays and lesbians. Then US President Donald Trump commented on the clip of the beating, tweeting, is this even possible to believe? Can this be for real? Where is this nursing home? How is the victim doing? Hayden was arrested and charged with two counts of assault, larceny, and two counts of stealing a financial transaction device. He was deemed incompetent to stand trial in the aftermath and the charges were dismissed pending the restoration of his mental health. Updates indicated he was being treated at the Kalamazoo Psychiatric Hospital. Two months after the attack, Bledsoe passed away in a different nursing home and while the cause wasn't deemed to have been homicide, his family reported that he hadn't been the same since the beating. They sued Westwood Nursing Center in the attack's wake. Number 5. Wayne Axtell On September the 2nd of 2021, Englishman Wayne Axtell was arrested in Headington, Oxford, after law enforcement found him riding around on a stolen Segway. The scooter had been taken during an overnight burglary in Boars Hill four days earlier. A lock knife in the man's possession and his phone were confiscated. An analysis of the device revealed recordings he'd inadvertently made of himself boasting about a series of thefts he'd carried out in Oxfordshire and Buckinghamshire. The bungling criminal had failed to realize that his phone's default settings were set to record his calls. On March the 31st, while speaking to an accomplice, he expressed surprise that the police had released him after having previously investigated him for a series of break-ins. One had occurred in Buckingham Costa in late September of 2020, and another at a post office in Reading Road, Henley, on October the 3rd. Axtell recorded himself saying he got away with the crimes. Investigators followed up on the new evidence and lifted Axtell's DNA from a flashlight he dropped during the post office burglary. The phone conversations also linked Axtell to the theft of ride-on lawnmowers and gardening tools at Noonan Park and Mendenham Abbey, among other sites. Commenting on the recordings, Axtell's lawyer noted, it's an extraordinary piece of evidence and a real own goal for him. 
Axtell eventually pleaded guilty to conspiracy to steal, non-dwelling burglary, handling stolen goods and possession of a blade. Number 4. Peyton Shires Peyton Shires, a 24-year-old licensed social worker from Columbus, Ohio, was arrested on October the 6th of 2023 after she'd had intimate relations with a male teenager assigned to her for counseling. The illicit relationship was discovered by the victim's mother, who'd seen messages on his phone from Shires asking if he deleted the videos and if his mother had seen the videos or messages. The woman called Franklin County Law Enforcement on September the 27th and investigators confiscated the phone. Detectives found clips on the device of Shires and the victim having relations at various locations in Columbus with the acts occurring throughout September. The police did a recorded three-way phone call between the teen's mother and Shires during which the social worker admitted to the tryst. The teenager was interviewed by the police and confirmed that they'd been involved. Shires was subsequently arrested for unlawful conduct and banned from making any contact with the victim before she was released on a $50,000 bond. On October the 12th, roughly two weeks later, she went to the teen's home armed with a handgun. Shires had reportedly called the mother beforehand threatening to kill her because she and the victim had ruined her life and taken everything from her. The mother wasn't at the address, but saw Shires on her porch through her doorbell camera and alerted law enforcement. The camera then went down and it was suspected that Shires had tampered with it. Responding officers found the 24-year-old on the porch with a gun to her head and her finger on the trigger. She was ultimately talked down and taken into custody on further charges of intimidation of a crime victim and intimidation of a crime witness. Number 3. Lauren Ann McGeechin Instagram model Lauren Ann McGeechin, aged 28, and a group of accomplices forced their way into a factory farm near Toowoomba, southern Queensland, Australia, in November of 2019. McGeechin filmed herself and the others stealing six piglets from the farm and later posted the videos to her Instagram. McGeechin, who was described as a vegan activist, told her followers that she and her group had rescued the animals because she feared they would have been slaughtered or succumbed to their living conditions. Her clips showed partially buried pig carcasses and piles of dead piglets in a stall with a live sow in the aftermath the swimwear model's social media featured a photo of her with a piglet captioned, My Heart and Soul. In July of 2019, prior to the piggery incident, McGeechin had also broken into Williams Poultry, a chicken farm in Cannon Vale. She and other activists tried to conceal their identities as they scaled gates and cut through security fences before breaking into the chicken sheds. Clips of the raid were also posted to McGeechin's Instagram. In the aftermath of the piglet theft, the model's home was raided by law enforcement who questioned her about the missing animals. She and three other women were arrested. In August of 2020, the model pleaded guilty to stealing stock and two counts of entering premises with intent at Brisbane Magistrates Court. McGeechin, who claimed to have no regrets over rescuing the animals, stated that she'd had no intention of taking them upon breaking into the farm but felt compelled to do so after seeing the conditions in which they were being kept. She was ultimately sentenced to 90 hours of community services in order to pay a $300 fine. As she walked away from the courthouse, McGeechin carried a sign that read, Right to Rescue, while joined by several supporters with similar placards. Today's topic was requested by Sean Delap8587. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. John Robert Hill South Florida man John Robert Hill garnered millions of followers on Instagram by posting videos of his often illegal stunts. The 20-year-old, known to his followers as Bunk IG or John Gabbana, was filmed on May the 13th of 2017 jumping over the counter and stealing a tray of donuts from a Dunkin' Donuts in Miami Gardens while smoking marijuana. Hill, whose collection of face tattoos included the word misunderstood, among others, was charged with 
burglary and petty theft in the viral stunt's wake, a judge subsequently referred him to a court program with an alternate bond of $1,500, warning him to stay away from Dunkin' Donuts and jokingly telling him, try Krispy Kreme but stay out of this stuff. Hill nevertheless was recorded repeating the stunt at the same Dunkin' Donuts in July, resulting in additional charges of burglary and petty theft. Other examples of criminal behavior on his social media included him taking sodas from a gas station, pizza from a Little Caesars, and an entire cookie box from Subway. Upon reaching a million followers on Instagram, Hill celebrated by getting on top of a counter at another fast food restaurant, ripping his shirt off and loudly declaring his success before pouring milkshakes on his body. He then took off his pants, threw additional milkshakes on the floor and started sliding on the spilled liquid, yelling out, Hood slip and slide with it. In 2018, Hill, who had begun pursuing a rapping career, was arrested at his home in Calabasas, California, on charges of illegal possession of assault weapons. Hill's antics eventually backfired outside of the legal realm and, in 2019, footage emerged of him being punched in the face during a failed prank. He gave an update from a hospital bed in a video that showed him with an open, bleeding mouth. Hill raised his middle finger in the clip that was captioned, Jaw broke on both sides, surgery coming up. Instagram eventually deleted his account and updates on Hill indicated that he turned his life around, found religion, and started working for his uncle remodeling pools. If all these cases on people filming their own crimes wasn't enough to satisfy you, then go ahead and stay tuned till after number one for our next video on when photo shoots go wrong. Number 1. Oliver Cooper During a crime spree that stretched across the Midlands, 23-year-old English man Oliver Cooper handled more than 30 stolen high-end vehicles totaling over $5 million. Over the course of less than a year, the ring in which Cooper operated was believed to have targeted 17 Range Rovers 14 Audis as well as several other Jaguars and Mercedes. Cooper's downfall began after he was captured on CCTV emerging from a stolen Ford Fiesta at a Birmingham retail park in January of 2021. He snuck his way into a Range Rover Sport, which he then drove off followed by an accomplice in the Fiesta. While behind the wheel of the stolen Range Rover, Cooper recorded himself on his phone capturing his half-covered face. Weeks later, the aforementioned Fiesta was pinged by an ANPR camera in Birmingham city centre and officers began a pursuit. At the end of the chase, a man made his escape by sprinting from the vehicle and running down the stairs of the Bullring shopping centre. Footage from Birmingham City Council cameras and CCTV footage of the high-speed pursuit led to investigators identifying Cooper as the suspect. West Midlands police arrested him at his home in Northfield in September of 2021 and seized two of his phones. Investigators described them as a gold mine as they contained incriminating messages as well as footage and photos from the many cars he'd been involved in stealing. The clip from the Range Rover cemented his involvement in the spree. Cooper admitted conspiracy to burgle and conspiracy to handle stolen goods, for which he was jailed for six years and eight months at Birmingham Crown Court in August of 2023. Number 10. Tiago Felipe Souza Braganza and Walderson Junior da Silva in January of 2020. A Brazilian model named Ana Braga suddenly vanished from her California home. The 24-year-old had moved to Los Angeles in 2019 to further her modeling career, but January the 29th marked the last time anybody had heard from her. Braga knew two other Brazilian nationals, Tiago Felipe Souza Braganza and Walderson Junior da Silva also staying in California at the time. The woman's friends reported that she'd become distant after getting romantically involved with one of the men. One night, video surveillance captured Braga entering her home with the peer, who later claimed they were high on an illicit substance. They maintained that Braga had brandished a knife at them and, while acting in self-defense, that fatally strangled her with a power cord. However, in a video they'd taken just moments after killing her, Braganza and Silva were heard mocking the woman. Her body could be seen laying face down with a cord wrapped around her neck. 
before the duo hid her in a comforter. Surveillance video captured the men leaving Braga's home while carrying the comforter. They placed the model's body into her car and subsequently drove 1,300 miles to Oklahoma City. Weeks later on February the 12th, police found her empty vehicle in the parking lot of a casino. Surveillance video from February the 1st showed Braganza and Silva abandoning Braga's car before getting into a green minivan. They then fled to Mexico before catching a flight back to Brazil. On February the 22nd of 2020, both men were arrested in the South American country and admitted to murder in Braga. Number 9. Maury Travis In May of 2002, Maury Travis, also known as the St. Louis Killer, was arrested in connection to a string of deaths in the area. Between March of 2001 and May of 2002, Travis was proven to have been responsible for the murder of at least 12 escorts, whose bodies were found along roadsides throughout the city. Police sorted through several pieces of evidence that pointed to Travis, including a map that the man himself had anonymously sent to the authorities with the location of one of his victims' bodies. Investigators were able to trace the map back to Travis's computer. When they searched his home, the police found a chamber in his basement where they determined he tormented his victims before killing them. Recordings were found that showed abuse, torture and at least one instance of Travis strangling a woman to death. He admitted to committing 17 murders but only 12 bodies were found. Travis was arrested on June the 7th of 2002 but just three days later was found dead in his cell after he'd hung himself. Number 8. Richard Davis and Dean O'Reilly In 2006, Missouri police discovered the body of Michelle Huff Rishi, burnt and buried in a shallow grave. Investigators found evidence that linked Richard Davis and his girlfriend, Dean O'Reilly, to the crime. However, by the time the connection was made, the couple had fled and gone into hiding. While searching their home, the police came upon graphic videos that showed the couple torturing and abusing both Huff Rishi and another woman, Marsha Spicer, whose body was also found in a shallow grave. After an eight-day manhunt, the police eventually captured the couple. Davis received the death penalty while Riley was given nine consecutive life sentences for the murders. In December of 2020, it was announced that Davis had died behind bars at the age of 56. Number 7. Gregory Graff 33-year-old Jessica Paget's mother reported her missing after she disappeared from her Pennsylvania home on November the 21st of 2014. During an extensive five-day search, the police questioned Paget's stepfather, Gregory Graff, whose story about what had happened was inconsistent. Graff eventually confessed to the authorities that he had shot Paget in the back of the head and recorded himself abusing her corpse before hiding it on his property. At his trial in 2015, the jury only needed six minutes to convict Graff of first-degree murder, resulting in a sentence of life in prison. Number 6. Deirdre Hunt and Konstantinos Fotopoulos In 1990, Mark Kevin Ramsey went out to the woods west of Daytona Beach, Florida with Konstantinos Fotopoulos and his girlfriend, Deirdre Hunt, in what he thought was an official initiation into a criminal club. The 19-year-old knew that Fotopoulos was a counterfeiter and was interested in being part of his operation. However, Fotopoulos had no real intention of allowing Ramsey on the inside. The problem was the latter already knew too much and had threatened to blackmail the former. Hunt later alleged that Fotopoulos had forced her to take part in a scheme of luring Ramsey into the woods to kill him, threatening to do the same to her if she didn't go along with it. Once they got there, Fotopoulos started videotaping with a camcorder as Hunt shot Ramsey four times, thrice in the chest and once in the head. The recording was used as compelling evidence during their trial that resulted in both Hunt and Fotopoulos being sentenced to death. However, eight years later, Hunt's sentence was reduced to two terms of life in prison. Number 5. Jamel Dunn on July the 9th of 2017, Jamel Dunn, a 31-year-old Florida man, struggled to stay afloat after entering a pond. A group of five teenagers between the ages of 14 and 18 
happened to be on the shore when Dunn called out for help. Instead of intervening, they got out their phones and started recording while they mocked him and laughed at his pleas for assistance. They filmed him for over two minutes as he drowned and after Dunn's death didn't alert anybody. His family desperately searched for him in the aftermath and it wasn't until five days later that police found his body in the pond. Despite video evidence of the teen's complacency, a judge argued that while there may have been a moral obligation to help, there wasn't a legal one as there was no law in Florida that required a person to provide emergency assistance. However, the Coca Police Department intended to charge the teens with a misdemeanor for not complying with Florida Statute 406, which stated that it was a person's responsibility to report a death if they saw one. The conviction would have only meant a punishment of a thousand dollar fine per person, and the state attorney ultimately decided not to press charges. Number 4. Chemerin Yilmaz on September the 16th of 2018, a UK teen was fatally beaten and stabbed by four other teens in what was believed to have been a gang-related incident. The victim, Chemerin Yilmaz, had ties to the Mile Road gang, while his killers, Aaron Miller, Caleb Brown, Jacob Morgan, and Ramon Juana were part of a rival gang called the Black Tom Gang. Investigators uncovered video footage that showed prior tension building up between Yilmaz and his rivals before the attack against him took place. The four teens recorded the entire incident on Snapchat, which included the stabbing, beating and bludgeoning of Yilmaz with a hammer. His friend called for help and the teen was rushed to the hospital where he died the next day. All four youths were found guilty at their trial and sentenced to life in prison. Miller was given a minimum of 21 years, Brown and Joanna were sentenced to a minimum of 17 years, and Morgan was sentenced to serve a minimum of 16 years. Number 3. Bethany Martin In July of 2021, Bethany Martin, then in her late teens, was walking through a Texas neighborhood with her friend when they came across the body of a 25-year-old man in a drainage ditch. Martin's friend took a video which they later posted to Snapchat of her removing a necklace from the dead man's corpse. The friend also took the pendant from the necklace with the intention of keeping it stating that it matched her style. The girls then called the police to report the body. During the investigation that followed, law enforcement was informed of Martin's video, which had since gone viral. Upon seeing the recording, the police arrested and charged Martin as an adult with felony theft from a human corpse or grave but she was released on $2,000 bail. The friend who was with her also faced charges, but due to her younger age, she was charged as a minor. The man was identified as Marcus Adams. The pendant that the girls had stolen was returned to Adams' family. Number 2. Mark Masters and Sean Thompson In September of 2008, three English teenagers, 19-year-old Mark Masters, Sean Thompson aged 17, and a younger female friend were involved in brutally attacking an innocent man, which ultimately led to his death. Masters and Thompson were playing Happy Slap, a gruesome game that essentially involved beating up random people on the street. On one particular day, the trio targeted 29-year-old Gavin Waterhouse. Masters and Thompson asked their friend to record the attack with her phone while they assaulted him. In spite of his injuries and losing consciousness, Waterhouse initially survived his ordeal. However, he didn't go to a hospital for treatment and died three days later from a ruptured spleen. The teens posted the video online, which was used as evidence to convict them for the attack. Masters was sentenced to seven years and Thompson to six years in juvenile detention facilities for manslaughter, while the friend who recorded the attack received two years for aiding and the betting. Number 1. Luca Magnotta In 2010, Canadian man Luca Magnotta started uploading gruesome videos that showed him killing kittens, but at the time nobody knew who he was. Groups of animal rights activists made it their mission to bring the individual behind the horrific footage to justice. After following up on clues from the clips, internet sleuths were able to uncover his identity. When they alerted the police, however, nothing came of it, which allowed Maniota to continue posting similar content. Then, in 2012, he uploaded a video on a whole other level. In it, he was on top of a nude, 
bound Chinese man, later named as Justin Lin. Maniota stabbed him 100 times with an ice pick and dismembered his body. The police was contacted and the killer was promptly put on Interpol's most wanted list. He was found within a month and arrested at a cyber cafe in Berlin. His 2014 trial resulted in him being sentenced to a minimum of 25 years in prison. The case was featured in Netflix's massively successful true crime documentary series, Don't F with Cats, Hunting an Internet Killer. Thanks for watching. Which would you rather be leaked out? A video of you committing a non-violent crime or one of you and your partner in the act? Let us know in the comments section below.